Hey guys, happy Friday. It is so good to see you and thanks for joining me today. I am so tired. I woke up at three o'clock this morning and got up and made coffee, got caught up on uh, my comments and watched some YouTube videos, looked at the news, went back to sleep, then jumped in the shower and here I am. Is this gonna be my life? In my middle-aged years of waking up at two and three every single morning like clockwork, I wouldn't even need an alarm. I'm telling you, like clockwork, I wake up between one and three a.m. Why? I don't know. I don't know. This mind just doesn't want to shut off. It doesn't. I just can't believe I'm not a zombie this week because Monday I woke up at one a.m. and yes, I traipsed out of my bed into the kitchen and make coffee. And the remainder of the week, it was between 2 and I would say 4 a.m. of getting up. It's just crazy to me that my mind will not let me sleep. I'm going to have to have a long conversation with my mind today, and I'm going to give it a good talking to. Wouldn't it be wonderful if it was just that easy? Because your girl's a little tired and sleepy, and I want to get this video done, it's, I always film usually the day of. So it is Friday morning early and I just want to get it done, get it posted and relax. I hope you guys don't mind, but I do have two very funny stories for you. I think will be rather humorous. One involves decorating for sure. And the other one is, well, you'll, you'll find out, you'll find out. I think it may give you some giggles. I'm going to save the decorating one for last. And then I'm going to take you, I think out to the garage to show you this exciting new find that I'm thrilled about. So stay tuned for that. Just hold on, stick with me, okay? So several weeks ago, my husband had to go on a business trip and I was sound asleep, sound asleep, having a wonderful night's sleep when I started hearing noises coming from the ceiling. Mm -hmm. Do you know where I'm going with this? Do you? By the way, you guys, sorry about my finger. I used that rose water on my cheeks this morning and um, yeah, I forgot to wash my hands. I just noticed it and I'm like, they're gonna go, what is wrong with her fingers? Yeah, I forgot to wash my hand after I placed it on. Back to the story. I mean, <laughs> what would a story be without a squirrel moment? I'm sleeping soundly in the bed all by myself when I hear noises coming from the ceiling and I did notice, you know, because this is new construction, sometimes debris gets in the air vents. And I did notice in the bathroom, there was like a chip of, like it looked like a chip of paint that had dried on something. And when the air and the heat would kick on, you'd kind of hear it moving about. So I didn't think much of it this particular night. I just, I kind of blew it off like, oh, something's in the air vent, it's new construction. Well, I'll, I'll look into it later. The next night, Husband is still on a business trip. I'm still sleeping alone in my bed and the noises begin all through the night. All through the night. And I will tell you, I did not sleep this night because I kept looking up like, what in the world is that noise? Husband comes home and we're asleep and the noises begin and it, they got louder and louder and louder. And I, I kind of nudged my husband. I said, do you hear that? And he says, yeah, yeah, I do. And it was so loud. And he is a sound sleeper, let me tell you. When he jumped out of bed to, to go investigate, I knew he was concerned like I was. He stood looking up at this air vent, listening to the walls. I said, do you think it's an animal? You think it's an animal, don't you? He's like, now Liz, don't freak out because I am, you mm, talk about paranoia times 10. That's how I am when I think it's a mouse. I am terrified of mice, terrified of mice, terrified of bats, terrified of squirrels, all of which have found their ways into several of our homes. So, the next night, the noises got worse and worse and worse. And I said, well, my goodness, that can't be a mouse. That's got to be something big. I will be inserting the actual sound clip we took 
of the noise. And you tell me in the comments below what you think it's going to be. It literally sounded like, like something was chewing on something and then scratching and, and, um, just lots of scratching and chewing. That's what it sounded like. And it was just amplified, amplified. The next night we had to go out of town and my husband said, well, when we get back, I'm ordering some mouse traps just in case. And before we left, he went up to all three attic spaces to check and investigate to see if he found any signs of mice droppings. None, none at all. He had a black light. He went around all the edges because that's where they like to scurry. Nothing, nothing at all. And then it dawned on me. It dawned on me, guys. You're not going to like this because I didn't like it at all either. It dawned on me that several weeks beforehand, I had gone out to the garage to my store, as I like to call it. You know, I shared a, a video of me setting up shop in my garage. I've never had an issue with mice in my garage when I used to put my decor out there. Never. But then it dawned on me. I know, I knew exactly what had happened. We got a knock on our door, like at 5.30 a.m. in the morning. We were having our coffee and I thought, well, my goodness, who would interrupt us this early in the morning? Well, it was a construction worker letting us know that he was gonna be ripping up the street out in front of us. There was a drainage problem and he was asking us politely if he could borrow our hose because he was going to be having to cut into the street or concrete. He knew it was an inconvenience and would he would we mind? And we said, no, go ahead because this drainage issue is, is creating a huge puddle in front of our house. We're dragging in mud and dirt every day. Yes, yes, we will open the garage door. You can use our hose. He said it would take 30 minutes and, and, that, and that was that. But across the street, I don't know, maybe around seven o'clock in the morning, they started excavating the whole area over there. They were moving dirt. So I know exactly what happened is they disturbed some, some mice's home. You know, they weren't happy and they ran right into our garage and we forgot to shut our garage door. So our garage door was open like all day because our water spigot is in the garage of all places. Why they put it there, I don't know. I don't know. A week later, I was out there trying to get some decor items and I looked down on the bottom shelf and I saw my white cake stands. I had two of them and I had one turned upside down and I thought I saw, and I didn't have my glasses on, so I kind of blew it off. Mice poop. And I went, oh no, one got in here. Oh boy. And I'm th I thought, I'm gonna dump that. That's going. So fast forward to, we leave on a trip. My husband puts out mice traps in the garage and he puts them in the attic. He put peanut butter on them. Mice people don't come for me. I look at mice as intruders. You come into my house, I'm gonna take you out. So we go on our trip, we come home, we caught the intruders. We caught them, we caught them red-handed. So I've decided to get all of my decor out of there. It's all coming out and I'm putting it in the upstairs attic. So every day we've been kind of chipping away at it, carrying up uh, decor items and then uh, the shelving. And so I'm gonna do a really cute store up there and with the hopes that I don't have any intruders. You know what I mean? I hope not. I hope not. But I think if we keep the garage with the traps out there, anything that tries to get in will not get up, hopefully. And then we're going to seal around the perimeter. But boy, oh boy, I'm telling you, I hate, I hate mice. I cannot stand mice is because we moved to Virginia and we didn't know, this was years and years ago, we didn't know where we wanted to live, where we wanted to set down roots. And so we settled in this one city and we 
we rent, we decided to rent. We rented this gorgeous, gorgeous home. It was gorgeous. And I had little kids at the time. And unfortunately, it was infested with mice and we didn't even know it. We didn't even know it. And it, I was terrified because we would get up to have our coffee in the morning and we would see something scurry by in the kitchen and or in the family room and the mice poop everywhere. And we told the landlord about it and he did nothing, absolutely nothing about it. And it was a huge home, huge. And so we, at our expense, had to try to get somebody out and try to get these the mice situation taken care of. Uh, and we did. And they said there were several places that needed to be sealed up. We told the landlord. He re still refused to do anything about it. And I told the gentleman, I said, I have got babies that are crawling on the ground. They're toddlers. And I've got ma mouse poop everywhere. You have to take care of this. And he he still wouldn't do it. So you know what we did? We broke our lease. We broke our lease. It cost us a fortune. But I was not about to live in that house with toddlers and have them get sick because they touched where the mouse poop was. You could get very, very sick. So that is where my uh, mouse paranoia comes from was that house. It just, it was a big home. It was not sealed properly. And the mice just kept coming and coming and coming. And it was, it was just terrifying when you'd see them and they, they jump and they crawl and they, 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 they're just, ugh. And you think this guy would have been some help. You think he would have helped me catch these mice, but oh no, you were no help. You were no help at all. What's up? Yeah, you, you were not on your A game. So there's my mouse story. I hope it gave you a few chuckles. Maybe some of you can relate. Maybe some of you can't. And if you can't, because it hasn't happened to you, lucky you. Okay, on to my second story. This one's a little humorous. Hey guys, I'm in my Jeep and look what I have behind me. So when we moved here, uh, because it is a second home, we had to furnish it and we did bring some pieces from home, but the majority of items were purchased new. And we, I, you know what, when we were looking for a dining room table, I just wasn't finding one I was thrilled with. And a lot of them were on back order for three and four months. So you guys have seen the new table uh, that we got that was a round table with six chairs. It's nice, I like it, but I really, really, really was looking for a farmhouse white table. I, because this is a very small home and the whole main level is kind of like one big room, it's like kitchen, dining, family room. It's all in one. I felt like the kitchen was light and bright, the family room is light and bright, and in the center of the room, you have a kind of a darker piece of furniture. It's not dark, but it's darker than everything else. And I kind of felt that when I would sit in the family room, I would look at that table and think, well, my goodness, it's just that darker table is making the center of the room look dark. I came to my daughters about it and they're like, well, it kind of gives it a good separation with a different color. I said, true, that's true. I said, but, I'm somebody who always says, let there be light. I just wanted it light and bright and airy. And I'm just not a fan of a round table. I don't like decorating them. It's kind of like you can put some cute placemats on it and then a, a one centerpiece and you're like, done. Boring. I like a table that's longer where you can put a centerpiece, maybe some beautiful candle holders, and then decorate around it. So I was really missing that. And I kept telling my husband, I'm like, yeah, I love the table, but 
Also keep in mind the center of the room has no windows. So you've got windows in the kitchen, windows in the family room, but in the center of the room there are no windows. So that darker piece of furniture was really just making that middle room look really dark to me and I hated it. So I told my husband my thoughts on it. He could see my point and he said, well, we could try to sell the table and if you can find something else, we'll get it. I said, yes, okay, great. So I have been on the lookout and I found somebody that was selling their farmhouse set and I showed my husband, he says, yeah, I think that would look really good there. So I con we contacted the person and decided to go get it. So I'm corresponding with this girl via text and she tells me she bought this whole set a year ago and ended up putting it in storage and wasn't sure if she was gonna use it or not and ended up not using it and so uh, she decided to sell it. So anyway, we decide to meet on Wednesday somewhere on the West Virginia border at a restaurant where they were gonna drop the furniture. Initially, it sounded a little off, like meet at a restaurant to drop off big pieces of furniture, but okay. We put in the directions. It says it's about an hour and 45 minute drive. And let me tell you, the directions took us on a wild goose chase. We did freeway driving and then it took us into some little city. And then it was like country roads all the way down to this restaurant. And so we get to the restaurant, We there's a gas station next door, we gas up, we go park at the restaurant, and we wait. I get a text message that says, uh, running a little late, I responded, I said, no problem, we're here. And uh, then I get another text message a few minutes later saying, can I call you? I'm like, uh-oh. I'm like, I hope this wasn't a scam. I got a call and when I say hello, it's a man's voice. And I had been dealing with a woman all along. And he says, hi, I'm so-and-so's fiance. I'm at the storage unit loading, trying to load the furniture. And I don't know why I didn't just have you meet us here because now we have to load and then unload and it would have been much easier just to have you guys meet us at the storage unit. And I'm thinking to myself, well, yeah, that's true, but here we are at a restaurant. So he explains that he is still at his storage unit with his soon-to-be father-in-law, and they're trying to load it on the trailer, and he says, it's a little tricky to get here, so can I drive to the restaurant and meet you, and then you guys can follow me to the storage unit? Hello, red flags are going up all over the place. And I'm looking at my husband like, we just drove an hour and 45 minutes here. And now they're asking us to drive 10 minutes to a storage unit. So I say to him, is it a public storage unit? I mean, where is this place? He says, it's 10 minutes from the restaurant. And so then my husband says, well, just drop us the directions. Why won't they just drop us the directions? And he he just said, I, it's gonna be easier if I come get you and we all caravan there. And I said, okay, and keep in mind, my husband was driving the truck and I drove my Jeep because we, we weren't sure if we were gonna get all the furniture in the truck, you know, safely. So this guy shows up and he says, you know, I'm so sorry for the inconvenience. I know this seems odd, but it's just, it would be so much easier for me if you guys don't mind. And we say, okay, well, where is it? And he goes, it's across the bridge. I call my daughter. We have Life 360. I'm like, track our location. If you don't hear from me, call the police. It's, it's sad that you have to think that way in this day and age, but there are scams and there are people that fraud people, you know? I could even sense the hesitation in my husband's voice when he said, okay. Like he was not I on board with We're in West Virginia and we're going over this bridge. And then it says, welcome to Ohio. And then I thought, what? 
we're in Ohio. Now, I've never been to Ohio. I've, I've been through Pittsburgh and Pennsylvania, yeah, Pennsylvania, but all of a sudden we're in Ohio. So now I'm like, red flags, red flags, red flags. He says the storage unit is in an old abandoned school. It used to be a school. They converted it into a storage unit place. So I'm just like, this is sounding more and more strange. So we follow him down these country roads. We get to the storage unit and there, uh, oh, mind you, we have to pull around to the back of the building. There's nobody there. I'm like, I'm like, oh my gosh, nicest people ever. I can't even believe we felt so bad for even thinking like it was some sort of a scam. You just never know these days, like, you know, it's sad, but it's true. And they were the nicest people. They helped us load it and um, strap everything down. They even gave us a free tarp to put over everything because it was gonna rain. And uh, anyway, it was quite the adventure. It really was. So we get most of the furniture loaded and he says, oh, I forgot. There are two end tables that go with this collection. Would you like them? And I said, oh shoot, I would love them, but I didn't, I just brought enough cash for what you said this was gonna cost. I, I don't have any extra cash. He's like, that's okay, you know. You guys drove all this way and you accommodated us. It's free. I'm going to throw them in. And I said, oh my gosh, well, thank you. Oh, thank you so much. So anyway, they were the nicest people. It was, it was, it all worked out, but it was a little sketchy at first, I will admit. And this is where I need your guys' help. Please, please help me. So I get the chairs all loaded in my Jeep. Now keep in mind, this is secondhand furniture, guys. Um, she said she purchased it from a store where they did like, you know, the chalk painting and they refurbished furniture and stuff like that. And so I don't know where this furniture has been. Um, it did say Lane Furniture on it, uh, but obviously it was older furniture that had been, you know, updated. So I get the chairs in my Jeep and as I'm driving, I'm like, I'm like, what is that smell? I'm like, it smells like cat pee. Oh my gosh. How are we going to get that smell out? No, if it's the paint they used or if it is cat urine, but I, I felt so bad. And I'm like, I told my husband, I said, I, we can't bring that into the house. With it smelling like that, we've got to do something. So I got on YouTube, I got on Google, and I kept seeing that you can buy some sort of an enzyme spray and you spray it all over the stuff, you let it sit, and then you wipe it down really good and it's supposed to take the cat urine smell away. Please tell me guys that there's hope because I am going to be devastated if I got this cute farmhouse set only to not be able to bring it in the house. I had my husband spray it all over everything last night. I have not been out to the garage to check on it, but that was supposed to be my video today, was me showing you the new set, and we were gonna decorate that whole space together because I got the dining room table, six chairs, it, I got a wine cabinet or coffee bar. I, it's You can use it as either, it's super, super cute. And they threw in two end tables that match. And I was going to try to use one in the family room. So it was going to be a whole video. And it just, because of the cat smell, I just couldn't bring it in the house. I was like, no, we've got to fix this. Uh, I also have some sort of an ozone treatment contraption. And um, we once bought a truck and somebody had smoked in it. It wasn't like bad, but you could you could pick up some of the smoke smell and I am allergic to smoke. So somebody told us if you get an ozone treatment, it will get rid of the smell. And so we took it to a dealership. They did it for us and it literally smelled like a fresh new car. So I know there could be hope and I do have one that plugs into the, um, into an outlet and you just like let it rock and roll and then you, oh, you give it fresh air and it's supposed to take smells away. But I know those of you who have cats, 
is there hope? I think I'm going to wait for next week because I'm keeping my fingers crossed that this enzyme treatment works and I can bring it in the house and style everything. But I think it's going to look so much better in with my furniture that I currently have. It's going to lighten and brighten the space and it's going to make it feel a little bit more open. I, I Again, I'm just not a fan of a round table in a a, a small condensed space. It just, I don't know, it's not working for me. So fingers crossed. On another note, you may see these. Remember we worked on those last week and I loved them. Yeah, I completely redid that whole wall. Wait till you see what I did next week, but I brought these in the bedroom and I love them. So much better here. I just, I love it. I love the vibe it's giving in here. And at night, it's super cozy. And all I did was lean them on my nightstands. But um, anyway, more on this next week. All right, guys, that's going to wrap up my silly video for today. Uh, I hope you will forgive a tired girl. I just, just wasn't in the mood to decorate today. But we will get back at it next week. Uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed my silly stories. And um, have a wonderful and blessed Easter weekend. He is risen. He is risen. And uh, anyway, I'll see you guys next week. Love you all so much. Mwah! Bye guys. Mm -hmm.